What's up folks, how's it going this watch? Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna to be doing a head-to-head -head laptop comparison between the new 14 inch version of the MacBook Pro powered by the M1 Pro processor, as well as take a look at Microsoft's latest laptop with the Surface Laptop Studio. We're gonna be taking a look at the key advantages, disadvantages that each of these laptops presents and see if a Microsoft can live up to the performance and quality that the new generation Apple MacBook Pros have to offer. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. Now, one of the cool things about the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio is that it's actually a two-in-one due to the fact that you can flip out the display 180 degrees, effectively creating both a laptop and a tablet formation. And in tablet mode, the experience is quite similar to the new generation Surface Pro 8 that we recently took a look at, except for the fact that you have an integrated keyboard and trackpad combination, and it's a proper laptop. Although given the fact that the internal specs on both the laptop and the Surface Pro 8 are actually quite similar, both are powered by 11th generation Intel processors, you're actually getting a much better bang for the dollar, in my opinion, uh, due to the fact that the starting price of the Surface Pro 8 is around $1,100 versus $1,600 on the laptop. And even if you throw in a keyboard attachment on your Surface Pro 8, you're going to have a similar computing capabilities from a performance standpoint, but still be at least two to $300 cheaper. Of course, you still have to consider the fact that the Surface laptop has slightly more connectivity options and a decently larger display than the Surface Pro 8. But coming back to our comparison at hand with the new generation 14.2 inch MacBook Pro powered by the M1 Pro processor. How does the Surface Laptop Studio compare in terms of general specifications, performance, battery life, things like that? Now, in terms of actual physical design attributes and overall dimensional footprint, even though both of these two have around similar display sizes, 14.4 inches on the Surface Laptop versus 14.2 inches on the new generation MacBook, the Microsoft device is the slightly larger one at about 11 millimeters wider, seven millimeters deeper, and it is uh, significantly thicker and heavier, 18.9 millimeters in terms of thickness versus the MacBook is 15.5 millimeters, 100 grams more if you get the base model i5 version of the laptop like we have, or the i7 with the discrete uh, NVIDIA graphics card is even heavier at 1.8 kilograms. The build quality and overall material is excellent on both uh, being premium grade laptops. On the uh, Microsoft Surface laptop, you're looking at a primarily aluminum and magnesium reinforced unibody design chassis and the uh, MacBook Pro is primarily a high quality 7000 series aluminum casing. Now from a physical ports of connectivity option standpoint typically the Windows laptop always has more than the OS 10 based laptop but this is actually not the case when you look at the new generation Microsoft stuff where the Surface laptop only really has two Thunderbolt 4 or USB-C connections. Obviously, you can adapt those into many other kinds of connections, including full-size HDMI, SD card readers, etc. But you have to get hubs and adapters, which is kind of a pain in the neck. You do, however, have a dedicated charging connection, which is magnetically attaching and specific to the Surface products. So you don't have to sacrifice a USB-C connection if you want to charge your laptop, which is nice. And you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now on the new generation MacBook Pros, Apple has addressed the several complaints over the years of having lack of ports and connectivity options. People always have to adapt USB-C into other connections and they've actually added a full-size HDMI connection, a full-size SD card reader, in addition to having three Thunderbolt 4 connections on uh, both sides of the PC. We also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a dedicated MagSafe charging connection so you don't have to sacrifice a USB-C to actually charge your laptop. Furthermore, in terms of speaker configuration, we have a six array system found in the new generation MacBook Pros with force canceling woofers. Sound fantastic, very loud, excellent to listen to music to, watch movies, and share whatever audio source you want with other people in larger rooms and spaces. Now we have a quad speaker configuration on the Surface Laptop Studio, which does sound pretty good, but doesn't have quite the vibrato dynamic range and overall impact from an amplitude standpoint as the speaker system found on the new generation MacBooks. Now in terms of the front-facing cameras, we're actually shooting with
with them right now. Both can do 1080p 30 FPS. There's a little bit of a difference in terms of field of view. You can see that the Surface Laptop is certainly wider uh, compared to the more zoomed in 4-3 aspect ratio that we have on uh, the uh, MacBook's built-in FaceTime camera. And uh, in terms of the microphone array on the MacBook, we have a triple array of microphones. It's directional beam foaming and uh, they have a low signal to noise ratio. So they should do a good job in terms of reducing overall background noise, improving the speaker pickup uh, when you're having your Zoom calls and things like that. The Surface Laptop utilizes a dual microphone setup with far field studio mic quality. Now, moving forward, let's talk about the trackpad and uh, keyboard combinations we have on both of these two, and they're both fantastic. The trackpads themselves have plenty of surface area, multi-touch uh, compatible, and have a great overall responsiveness and uh, tactile feedback. The Surface Laptop is utilizing a traditional mechanical hinge system for its clicking capabilities, and the MacBook Pro is utilizing their haptic feedback based force touch trackpad technology, which is uh, not a mechanical system, but one that uses an actual uh, haptic motor to give you that same sensation of physically clicking down on the trackpad itself, which has been working great throughout the couple of years. Furthermore, both are utilizing full-size QWERTY keyboards with full-size keycaps, very comfortable to type on. They both give you a decent amount of travel distance on the keys themselves, so a good amount of tactile feedback as well as responsiveness. Super comfortable to type on for a prolonged period of time. Both utilize an upper function row on the MacBook Pro. They have most of the quick controls that you would need, volume, all your media playback settings, and screen brightness. The only thing missing is controlling the brightness of your backlight keyboard which unfortunately has to be done through OS 10 on screen or using third-party application that will remap those settings. But you do have dedicated controls for your backlight keyboards as well as general screen brightness and media controls on the function row on the Surface laptop. Moving forward, let's talk about the display configuration on both these two laptops. Now, they're similar in terms of display size, 14.4 versus 14.2 on the uh, Surface and MacBook respectively. And you can see that on the new generation MacBook Pros, the bezels are very, very thin on the sides and top of the display, which definitely uh, makes the laptop look super modern, very sleek and minimalistic. Uh, but it does introduce uh, that camera bump that the iPhone has been really known for for the past couple of years uh, due to the fact that they still need a little room for that front camera FaceTime array and the sacrifice and compromise uh, having those thin bezels is to deal with this uh, camera bump. You know, you don't have that bump on the Surface laptop, but it does have uh, slightly thicker bezels all the way around, which definitely doesn't look bad, but not as minimalistic or as sleek looking as what we encounter with the bezels on the MacBook. Now, in terms of resolution on the Surface, you're looking at 2400 by 1600 with a PPI count of about 201. With the liquid Retina XDR display found on the MacBook Pro, you're looking at a native resolution of 3024 by 1964, higher PPI count of about 253. In terms of refresh rate, both are actually utilizing 120 hertz, which looks super smooth in everyday computing applications, as well as watching fast-paced action videos, sports, and obviously uh, beneficial for gaming applications as well. Now, in terms of the overall brightness and dynamic range, I think the MacBook Pro definitely has the superior display with a typical sustained rating of up to a thousand nits and a total maximum peak brightness going up to 1600 nits versus 500 nits on uh, the Surface uh, Laptop Studio. And uh, generally uh, speaking, the Surface Laptop Studio definitely has a decent display, but uh, we've pretty much seen these types of uh, displays for the past, I would say, two to three years. It doesn't really push any boundaries in terms of dynamic range and overall pixel count, but the display found on the new generation MacBook Pros look absolutely insane in person. You can tell that the colors really pop out when you're watching an HDR uh, video, the motion and overall sharpness and clarity is pretty much up there with what you're going to find with like the iPad Pros and things like that. And it's definitely one of the best displays you can find on any laptop today. Moving on, let's talk about the internal specifications now, specifically to our configuration on both these two uh, laptops. We're using the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, and uh, there's 
different variants of the M1 Pro and Pro Max chip, but we specifically have uh, the eight core version CPU and the 14 core uh, GPU. Now on the Surface Laptop Studio, you can either get the i5 or i7 Tiger Lake 11th generation Intel CPUs. We're using uh, specifically the i5 11300H processor that has four cores, eight threads, has a base frequency of 3.1 and can turbo up to 4.4 gigahertz. And uh, with this version, it's using its Intel Iris XC graphics, which are excellent for integrated Intel graphics compared to the previous generation. And if you choose uh, to opt up to the i7 version, you can also get a discrete RTX 3050 Ti that will definitely get you better graphical capabilities. But uh, with the standard model that we have over here, we also have 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can get up to 32 gigabytes on the Surface Studio laptop, as well as a 256 gigabytes of a long-term storage. And uh, the cool thing about uh, these new generation uh, Microsoft products is they're using 2230 M.2 modules, which are actually user accessible on uh, these machines, which is pretty cool. In terms of the RAM storage configuration on our uh, MacBook Pro, we're using 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of long-term solid state storage. Now, in terms of the results of our benchmarking, let's take a look at our first benchmark, which is going to test out the CPU Cinebench R23 on the multi-core performance score. The uh, Surface Laptop Studio got 5,300 points on the multi-core side and 1,200 points on the single core side versus uh, the uh, MacBook Pro got over 9,500 points and 1,500 points. Geekbench 5, a similar kind of uh, results where we get around 5,100 points on the multi-core performance, 1,200 points on the single core on the Surface Laptop, and on the MacBook Pro, it's significantly faster again, both in terms of multi-core and single core scoring over 9,900 points on the multi-core and 1,700 points on the single core. Moving forward in terms of the SSD performance, we can use one specific benchmark that uh, kind of is a fair similar comparison on both OS 10 and Windows. And that's Amorphous Disk Mark on OS 10 and Crystal Disk Mark on the Windows side. And on the Surface Laptop Studio, using Crystal Disk Mark, we got 2.2 uh, gigabytes a second in terms of read and one gigabytes a second in terms of sequential write performance. On Amorphous Disk Mark OS 10, the MacBook Pro scored 6.9 gigabytes in terms of read and 4.8 gigabytes a second in terms of write, which is definitely a significantly faster SSD. But in terms of a real world a data transferring speeds, it's going to really depend upon what you're transferring from. So for example, if we're transferring six gigabytes of data onto the desktop on both platforms using a standard USB thumb drive, it's going to be the bottleneck is going to be on that thumbstick specifically. So it actually took about one minute to complete that data transfer on the MacBook Pro versus only two seconds longer on the Surface Pro laptop. Furthermore, since I'm interested in both these two laptops from a multimedia standpoint, I want to do our kind of standardized Premiere Pro 4K 30 FPS 5 minute render export time test where we simply exported a 5 minute 4K file to see how long it takes. And it only uh, took about three minutes 18 seconds to complete on the MacBook Pro versus the exact same project in the exact same scenario. Took about eight minutes, 50 seconds on the Surface Laptop Studio. And lastly, in terms of the gaming performance, we utilize a Unigen Synthetic Valley Benchmark, set the render size to 1920 by 1080 ultra detail settings, and the average frame rate was 36.4 on the Surface Laptop versus 74.5 on the 14-core GPU found on the base model version of the M1 Pro. SLC. Moreover, let's finally talk about the battery performance. In terms of actual capacity itself, the Surface Laptop Studio has a 58 watt hour battery versus 70 watt hour battery on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now, according to the manufacturers on the Surface Laptop Studio, you can get up to 19 hours of usage versus 17 hours of video playback and 11 hours of wireless web, according to Apple with the new generation 14 inch MacBook Pro. We did our own video playback test using a VLC on both OS 10 and Windows playing the same video on loop, 50% screen brightness in airplane mode with all the wireless antennas off. And on the MacBook Pro, we got a total runtime of 13 hours, 45 minutes. And on the Surface Laptop Studio, in the exact same scenario, we got a total runtime of seven hours and 27 minutes.
Now our video playback test is just a standardized way for us to eliminate all variables and just to isolate uh, the uh, capabilities of the battery when it comes uh, to the overall runtime of just playing a video using the same app. Obviously with uh, your own day-to-day -day usage the battery life will uh, definitely vary but it's probably safe to say that with that larger capacity and the hardware and software optimization with the new generation MacBook Pro it's probably going to deliver a couple of more hours at least uh, compared to the Surface Laptop Studio. Now, in terms of the advantages of the Surface Laptop Studio, I would say that one, it has the two-in-one factor of being both a laptop and tablet, and certainly is uh, kind of cool in that sense that you could use it with their Surface Pen. You can use it with your uh, fingers since it does have a capacity of a touchscreen display, and uh, Windows 11 is both optimized for a cursor keyboard uh, configuration as well as touchscreen uh, configuration. The other thing is obviously from a price perspective, uh, the Surface Laptop Studio starts around $1,600 versus you're looking at $2,000 for the cheapest version of the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Now, in terms of the advantages on the MacBook Pro side, well, in pretty much every facet, it's better. It's thinner, lighter, more compact. It has better speakers, display configuration, obviously has more ports and connectivity options, surprisingly enough, and uh, obviously a lot faster from an internal hardware specification standpoint. Uh, certainly, if you're in to multimedia based applications, video editing, photo editing, anything like that, the experience is going to be definitely superior on the MacBook Pro side. And lastly, as we mentioned before, the battery life is going to be better as well. So you are paying for it, but uh, you are getting definitely the superior hardware, in my opinion. I would definitely love to know what you guys uh, think of the new generation Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. Do you think it's worth getting compared to the other laptop options out there? I personally think if you want to go Microsoft, uh, you probably want to get uh, the Surface Pro 8. It definitely gives you a little bit more bang for the dollar, as we mentioned earlier in this video. And uh, from a performance standpoint and from a sheer laptop standpoint, uh, the new generation MacBook Pros are kind of unbeatable uh, based on what I've seen uh, thus far. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to give us a, a like. Check out the description down below for more details about everything we've talked about. And if you want to help support the channel, the best thing you can do is just watch our content, subscribe, and uh, if you want to donate anything, you can use our paypal.me. Anything really helps, and also our Amazon affiliate links as well, which doesn't cost you anything extra. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.